defining light, pretty dull, dreaming again of exotic places, wishing you were somewhere else. We offer you escape. <laughs> Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape with us now to the year 100,080 and a world where beauty and terror live side by side as H.G. Wells describes it in his immortal story, The Time Machine. You must be mad. A time machine. Yes, my friend, a time machine. This, this thing? This very thing. This contraption? This framework made of quartz and bronze and ivory, with its levers and dials and its seat in the middle. This is the result of three years' hard work. I promise you, follow that on this machine a man can go wherever he likes in time. By working these levers, a man can choose his century, his year, his very day. Oh, for real, old man. Time is only a kind of space. If we can move about in all the other dimensions of space, why not in time, too? Oh, nay, it is impossible. Out of the question. Well, what are the journeys I've already taken on this little contraption? I'm afraid you've been having a bad dream. You mean I've developed into a liar? Very well. You shall have proof, my friend. How? Let's climb on, Carlo. Sit in the seat beside me, face these ivory dials, and I'll take you for a little spin. Well, you, you mean right now? Right now. Oh, just, um, in case this thing should take off like the flying red horse, are there any, uh... Any preparations? Uh, no, Carlo, no. You won't be middleweight on this trip, not even a toothbrush. You'll be back here in my laboratory in less than a minute. Frightened, Dudley. Then you're braver than I am. Tell me, what time is it? It's um, just 12 noon. Always oh, start. I want to adjust this control a bit. Oh. Is, uh, is everything ship shape? Well, did you notice anything just then? Only a noise, a humming noise, nothing else. At what time is it? You just asked me, old man. It's 12. Well, that's odd. What? My watch says 11 o'clock. It was sworn it was noon a moment ago. There must be something wrong with it. It's only that I touched the lever to yeah. test it, and we've gone forward a full day. Twenty-three hours, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's Finished scoffing, Father. Yes. Yes, I believe I have. Then hold tight. This will be the real article. I'm ready, Dudley. Good man. Well, Harry. Say goodbye, Paula. Say goodbye to 1960. He went over the shattering shot. The machine swaying on him. All the stuff at the field of laboratory suddenly fell away. Strikes was speeding up today like a classic from my feet. I saw the stuff hopping across the sky, leaping swiftly across at every second, and every second marking his head. I saw the moon spinning through her quarters like a ball, a mule to fall in the twinkling of an eye. No broken bones. 
What happened? Not sure. Not to stop too suddenly. Where are we, Dudley? The ground for yourself. The wide lawn. Beautiful, vast garden. Uh, I'm, I meant geographically. Just where we were when we started, where my laboratory stood 100,000 years ago. And the year, Dudley? What is the year now? 100,080. It seemed absolutely incredible. A dream. The pleasant one. For the garden in which we found ourselves was beautiful and summery. With an unexpected perfume about it, almost like patine. At some distance, we could see a large and imposing building. And everything was quiet and peaceful. But almost too much so. And the sense of strangeness of incredible strangeness sent a shiver up my spine. One hundred thousand and eighty. Father, do you want to go back? Yes, yes. I rather think I do. Let's go back. Come From over there, the bushes. It sounded human. Come on. Seems to be a very small girl. Oh, a bit of beast here. Some kind of struggle with a little mark in her eyes. Now, my dear, you'll be all right now. You won't be harmed. Of course, she wasn't stand English. Motioning us to go with her. Yeah. Well, what about the animal? Did you see it? No, not a glimpse. Too fast for us. Perhaps you'd better go back, Dudley. The girl seems to be all right now. Leave her like this? Yes, yes, I've had enough. Well, they haven't, old man. Because they're here. All around us. They had crept up on soundless feet to surround us. The little people of the theater. And the girl we'd saved was not a child, but a full-grown woman. For they all stood four feet high, dressed in simple tunics. Beautiful creatures, but terribly frail, with a plump, soft kind of frailty. They were like eerie figures in a dream. And all we could hear was the rustling of their clothes as they surged happily around us, their faces, wheezing smiles. Why, they're not savage at all. They're very loving, gentle little people. Yes. And there's something terribly wrong with them. How do you mean? Think of them in the minds of five-year-olds. How do you expect them to be? Far ahead of us, of course. Incredibly ahead of us in knowledge and in science. <laughs> Look at them. Children. Oh, they seem happy in this huge garden of theirs. Uh, that may... I've changed my mind. Let's stay. Maybe we should enjoy spending a few days with our little friends. The little people led us home into their valley. They lived in colossal buildings, sleeping all together in one huge hall, eating in another, playing, frolicking together in the sunshine. And we lived with them for days in utter contentment. One afternoon, Dudley and I walked along the banks of the great city. Little people all wear the same clothes. The same soft, hairless skin, the same feminine roundness of limbs. Yes. I wonder if it's because they're vegetarian. They're vegetarian because they have to be. You haven't run across any horses or dogs, cattle of any kind, have you? No, not that you mentioned it. With good reason. All extinct by now. This is a dinosaur, is without Dudley. There's something strange here. Something hidden away in silence here in the year 100,080 felt the same way. I've taken the precaution of removing the control levers of the time machine, putting a master padlock on the main switches. Oh. I don't much fancy the idea of someone riding away with it into another century and leaving us here for the rest of our lives. Uh, Dudley, do you know where we are? Well, yes, this is where we landed. I thought so. I wasn't sure. Well, what did you ask? What happened to the machine? What? But it, they've taken it away. They've stolen it. This is where it was. It's right here. Look. Follow the track. Here where they've dragged it. Over here. Yeah. Come along. Down this path. Look. Right there. The monument. Into the brass doors in the base. Oh, oh they're locked. The machine. It, it must be in there. Hands yeah. tight. We must get it. Break down the door. Oh, how can we? Here. Use the ladder. All right. All right. Now. 
through it. I'm no good, Dudley. I tell you, we'll never break through. Never? Oh, never? You tell me it's through here. Stay here. All I want is you. You may never go home again. Where is it? Stop it. <laughs> the laughs that Red Skelton and Amos and Andy bring to CBS on Sunday nights are doubled, tripled, and quadrupled because of the friends, relatives, and strange acquaintances they bring with them. Hardly a Sunday night goes by, but you meet Shorty, the Kingfish, Sapphire, and a whole host of Amos and Andy funny friends. Red Skelton generously gives time to Willie, Clam, and the rest of his last provoking pals. You're invited to meet them all again tonight on most of these same stations when Red Skelton and his gang and Amos and Andy and their friends pack the house with mirth at CBS, the star's address. And now we return you to Escape. were caught in the year 100,000 and eighteen. The time machine was gone. The brass doors of the monument held. Our retreat was cut off. The thin line by which we could make our way back home. Back to our own time and our own people. Back to 1950. We had no way of communicating with the little people of asking what they had done with the machine or, or how to get it back. There was nothing hostile in their attitude. They were more like simple, wandering children. Only one the young woman, Weena, who was right we had saved on our first day, had become really friendly. She went with us wherever we walked, brought us presents of garlands and flowers, slept near us at night in the hall, and we in turn had taught her a few words of English. Now we redoubled our efforts, like men racing against the clock, so that we might speak to her and discover the secret of our immense loss. We were talking to her one night after the others had gone. No, not me, Sandy. No. How can you be so sure your people can steal the machine? Are there any thieves among them? Are they all perfect? Mm -hmm. That's so loud. Nothing. Oh, wait a minute. She doesn't understand. He must be sleeping somewhere in his hall. We are. They take machines. No, Dudley. No. Who then? Who? Uh, we. We are our friends. Yes. We must have machines. Yes, Dudley. Yes. Who took machines? Other people, not yours? Arthur? Um, what about those doors, Weena? Uh, doors open? No, no. Weena, machine in, in there must open. No, no, not open. Oh, all right. Go to sleep, get some rest. To become us, Paula. Are we caught here in this century? We spend our lives with the little people in their secret. We'll go back to the monument tomorrow. We'll find a way of breaking in. Good night, Dudley. Dudley. Yes. Did you just. There was again. What? Something. On my face. What? Cold. Filthy to the touch. On my face and my hair. It's cold and dead. That's me. You're okay. right. There's something in you with us. Smells of the grain. What is it? I don't know. But look at them. Look at the little people. They're all awake. They've only been fed. Please, let's get out of here. I want some fresh air. We went quickly through the hall and outside, away from the frantic rustling of the little people. The moon was full, just overhead, and it was close to dark. Faint sound speeding close behind us, and we turned. Our nerves ragged, our muscles tensed. But it was only we now, coming swiftly to join us. Is that me? I'm afraid. There is dark. Something. What do you mean, we know? It's dark. What? What? Me? Night? Why should they be afraid of the night, that night? It's not the night alone. Dark place, that's our cube. Perhaps it's something underground. <laughs> It was another day. We had wandered into a lovely, wooded place about a mile from the community. And suddenly, Weena screamed. We stopped short. 
a pair of glaring eyes were fixed upon us. As we stood there, petrified, the thing, a little ape-like figure, rushed across our path and disappeared in a clearing about 30 yards away. What was it? I couldn't see it to us. It seemed to be a dull white with white hair on its head and down its back. It looked like a small thing. It was running on all fours over this one. Tell very well. Weena, Weena, what was it? No, no. Who are the Morlocks? What are they? Weena, tell me. No, no. Let's go over there and see where it disappeared. Come along, Father. In the clearing, we found a round, well-like opening. Dudley and I leaned over and looked down a deep shaft. A small white creature was retreating down a ladder in the well. A human spider, its large, bright eyes watching me as it went swiftly down. Then it disappeared in the shaft. Aura, did you see it? Like an ape? Yes, but also like a man. So there are two species of men in this world. Yes. The little people above the ground and this obscene thing, this bleached monster below. And that white look common to animals that live in the dark. Like huge rats. Worms that are cold to the touch. I know, because they've touched me. Marla, you can feel the air being sucked down into this shaft. Yes, the earth must be tunneled enormously here under our feet. These monsters must live in the tunnel. I think we know now who stole our time machine. Yes. Yeah. Then, then we'll go down and have a look. No, no, let's go. Why let's not, go. Rina? You are not. You'll never come back. We must have our machine, my dear. You wait for us here. No, no. And so we went down. Our heels ringing on the small metallic bars that were meant for creatures so much smaller than us. Down we climbed. Down. Down. Ever in darkness. Down it seemed. Into the center of the earth. Into the core of the world. How much longer? Oh, no, we reach bottom. Uh, Can't be much further. You hear that? Like machinery. We're almost there. Uh, Thank heaven for that. Uh, All right, Father, I'm on the bottom. Come along, just two more steps. Now, give me your hand, Father. Good. Good. Way here. In the land of the Morlocks. You have a match? Yes, 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 here. There'll be a large vaulted cavern at the end of this passage. Uh, what do you uh, suppose they'll do if they catch us? I've no idea. Let us take care not to be caught. Another match. There's that throbbing line. Suddenly they're ventilating. Them pumping the air down. There must be thousands upon thousands of these more lots living up here. We haven't seen any yet except for our friends who came down ahead of us. Why, why do you suppose they want our time machine? I think they want us, not the machine. And we've come to them. We must have a chance. Carla, if that noise does come from air pumps, yeah. why is it so stuffy here, so oppressive? Dudley. That smell. Blood. Light another match. <clears throat> Dudley. Look. Straight ahead. On the white metal table. That for a meal. Yes. With a small haunch. Yes. We know that the cattle are extinct. Then. What do they feed on these Morlocks? Don't you know? Yes, I know. Oh. Another match? Yes, yes. Oh, that way I have no more. Have you the last match? No. Oh. All right. We'll have to go back then. You know the secret now, anyway. Morlocks living here underground. They're the masters of this age. And our friends up above. That is cattle, fed by them all, are clothed, supplied, and housed until the day when, when they're cut out of the herd and brought underground as food. This is the future you're looking at. This is what we men of the 20th century shall come to. 
The door is nothing. Uh, the clothes get in this seat. I'll be ready in a moment. I waited for the hum that would signal the departure. There in the darkness, the Morlock was suddenly upon us. Cold, persistent fingers swarmed over my body, tugging at me, fighting me away from the machine. I held tight to Wiener, the man holding fast to life. So I just hit them away with my feet. Hurry, don't be hurry! again, motionless, sitting on the ridiculous contraption which he has called the time machine. Was it all a dream? Did any of it happen? Could any of it happen? Of course not. How stupid. Then what of this? What of this little piece of thin green silk I hold in my hand. Escape is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Today we brought to you The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, adapted for radio by Irving Rabbit, and starring John Boehner as father and Larry Dobkin as Dudley, with Georgia Ellis as Wiener. The special music for Escape was arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week, escape with us to a small fishing boat off the California coast and a night of terror and death at the hands of a brilliant madman as Roger E. Nelson tells it in his exciting story, Seven Hours to Freedom. <laughs> Freedom.